Hello, I'm Atuba George. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. Your word is coming to us freely. And our hearts, we have opened to receive, Lord. Abundance of revelation and truth. Holy Spirit, don't leave us to ourselves, but guide us into all truth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Man, praise God. Now, we, we are talking about angelic assistance. And, and yesterday, I was telling you about the, 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 the king of Samaria, his city, and how Elisha, I was telling you how to enhance angelic activities around you. And I said one way, it's by worshiping or praying in the Holy Spirit, serving God in spirit and in truth. That's why Jesus said to that woman, said to this woman, the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship God in, in, in the spirit. And then he says, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. And I told you, that means praying in the spirit. It means worshipping in terms of singing in the spirit. And then it also means speaking words given to you by the Holy Spirit. So yesterday I was showing you how to walk with the Holy Spirit and get angels walking all over the place for you. Listen, listen. You know, last week I was telling you about speaking, speaking, speaking. This is the secret about our speaking. When our speaking is exactly what is written in heaven. Now, how will you know that? It's the Holy Spirit that will tell you that. Do you know you can simply live your life by the Holy Spirit every day? This is not for pastors alone. This is for every believer, every child of God that names the name of the Lord. You can live your life in the Spirit. You can live. You, 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 you're dressing up. You, have you ever asked the Holy Spirit, Lord, what should I wear today? Holy Spirit, what do you think? What, what should I wear today? Why are you asking that question? Says, How can the Holy Spirit be concerned about what you wear? Oh, sure. You, you don't understand. You don't understand that on a daily basis, the things that you're supposed to wear has been written already. Say, huh? That's why Jesus said, take no thought for your life. Saying, what am I going to eat? Or what clothes or what will I put on? Why? Because all those things have been written. They have been assigned to you already. So why are you worrying about them when they've already been given to you? Jesus said, your father knows that you have need of this thing. Okay, if he knows that you have need of this thing, you think he will not hide it from you? No, he has already been given. Jesus was actually telling them there to prepare to live with angelic assistance all over the place. That's what Jesus was teaching them to do. So, when you speak words in prayer, in singing, and then in declaration, when you speak words given by the Holy Spirit, you activate angelic activities so strong around you. So when you now begin to master this walk, see, James says, whosoever looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues daring, he not being a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. Which work is he talking about? See, the Bible says faith without works is dead. What works is he talking about? Now, when, when, we, when we demonstrate our faith in God, there are physical things we do in response to our faith. That is the work. Now, many people have this thing upside down. Someone says, hey, how come you don't have a job? You say, I'm trusting God. You're trusting God? You say, yeah. And if you're really trusting God, you have to be out there looking for jobs. How many places have you applied? They say, none. What do you mean none? And you say, Yo. the Bible says faith without works is dead. You're just here, you say you're praying, and you're not doing any work. Which work do you think is the Bible is referring to? You think the work is by running helter skelter? I say, hey, God, oh God, at least bless my hustle. That's not the work the scriptures was talking about. The work the scripture was talking about are the works that came from the place of faith. What do I mean? Even James gave us an example with Abraham. 
And what did he say? <laughs> it's not amazing. Abraham was told that he will be the father of many. He will be the father of many. And then God now says, hey, Abraham, give me your son, your only son. When he got one, God says, give me your son, your only son, and offer him on one of the mountains of Moriah. Abraham believed God, and then he went and was ready to offer that son. And then God spoke, and then James said, can you now see that faith without works is dead? How, how do you relate that with your normal reasoning? The man has been told he will be the father of many. Now he has been given one. Then he was requested to give up that one. And that giving up that one was his work. Now nah, that's not supposed to be his work. The work is supposed to be marry plenty wives and start having children everywhere. Then you become the father of many nations, right? <laughs> you understand that? That's that's what you know. In your, you know, I'm giving that example of people who say, "Oh, why are you sitting down at home doing nothing?" And said, "Yo, now I'm not talking about lazy people. There's a difference between a lazy man and a man who's waiting on the Lord." A lazy man doing nothing. A man who's waiting on the Lord, he's busy doing something. His work may not be what you think he should be doing, but he's busy doing a work. And guess what? The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like the eagles. Now, I want you to get something. While they are, that, this is different between a man who's waiting on the Lord and a lazy man. The man who's waiting on the Lord, while he's waiting, he is being trained to be an eagle. He's been trained. So while, while others are running, he's been trained to be an eagle. Because the one who is waiting on knows that this, this, his flight and the journey is very far. So he's filling him with stamina. Filling him with stamina. Filling him with stamina. And by the time the Lord says, all right, it's time to go, he mounts up with wings like the eagles. He takes off and there is no stopping him. Now when he begins to move, guess what? Those who have gone before him are already getting tired. Then he gets to their spots. He is not about starting even. He just goes zoom. And he continues going. That's the difference between a lazy man and the one who's waiting on the Lord. So don't, don't mix the two. And when you see a man who's waiting on the Lord, you will know. Well, how will you know him? You will know him. Because he will always have a present word for the hour. That's the difference. What are you doing now? The Lord told me to stay indoors for the next seven days. You heard the Lord. Yeah, why? Because there's something. And then the Lord began to. And then suddenly, the Lord says, hey, go to Susan's organization. And he goes there. He doesn't have any, any experience working in that kind of work. But he goes there. And the Lord gives him a word for the CEO. And then he speaks the word that the Lord has given you. I said, just like Joseph, think about it. Joseph was in prison. Now look at Joseph's life. Potiphar's house, from Pete, Potiphar's house as a slave. Then he was thrown into prison. From being in prison, he was made a prime minister. How come nobody challenged his competence? Why didn't they say, I mean, what, experience, what job experience does this guy know in, in, in administrative work? But guess what? While he was busy waiting on the Lord, I knew he was waiting. You see, you don't understand. Sometimes you find yourself in certain unpleasant situations that you have no control over. Be smart. Be smart. Turn it into your waiting on the Lord. That's what Joseph did. He said, how do I know? Listen, Joseph had several opportunities to have run away. He could have run to his house. He could have run home. He could have. Now, Let's say in the beginning he was suffering. Listen, there was a season he became the chief servant in Potiphar's house. At that stage, don't you think he could have plotted his escape? Or even if he doesn't want to escape, he could have visited his father. You think he felt his father was dead? Of course not. But the word of the Lord came to him, stay here. Even when he became prime minister, there was seven years of plenty. At that time, his brothers did not come to Egypt, remember? As prime minister of Egypt, he could have said, Oh, Pharaoh, there is this land I want us to go and inspect. Let me see if Praventure will buy it or will conquer it. Then he goes, pays a visit to his father and comes back home. Why didn't he go then? The Lord says, stay in this land. He was waiting on the Lord. Now, this happens a lot to people who seek the Lord for themselves. 
Now, when the Lord says it is time to show yourself to Pharaoh, he did. He arranged the circumstance. Pharaoh, uh, 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 Joseph got in there, interpreted the dream, and guess what Pharaoh said? Who can we trust but the man who brought the answer to us? Let's give it to him. And guess what? He didn't get in there and start thinking, hmm, what is the law? What is one management 101? I need to do a crash course. No, you know why? All that time he was waiting on the Lord, he has been trained in management. He has managed Potiphar's house. He has managed the prison. That's managing the good and the bad in that prison. So he, he, he's gathered all those experiences. And that's what happens. You are believing God for a specific job, for example. And instead of, you, you, you pray and you know God hears you. And then God, instead of God taking you directly to that job, He is taking you around in circles. You know, you go to the Lord, I go there, go to this place. Oh, I, I, maybe this is the job God wants me to do. After three months, the Lord says, resign from that job. Ah, Lord, what are you doing now? Why are you doing all this to me now? And so, so what should I do? Wait, I'll tell you what next to do. Okay, he's with. Now you see, all those things he's doing because he's hearing from the Lord, that is his waiting. That is his works, showing his faith in God. I want you to understand this. Praise God. So by the time he's ready and God says it's time, guess what? He has prepared him. The one who's lazy, no word. He's just lazing about. He's not doing anything. No word of the Lord in his mouth. Nothing. He's just there, lazing around. And he can just say, one day, one day, one day. But what are you doing today? Nothing. That's the difference between the man who's lazy and the man who's waiting on the Lord. So don't mix the two up. But the man who's waiting on the Lord will have works to show that he's waiting on the Lord. Praise God. Yeah, so when we flow with the Spirit of God, angels are activated now i have to tell you this there is there is something you need to know this just came to my spirit while you're waiting on the lord the proof that you're waiting on the lord is this while you're waiting for that big miracle to happen you will realize that your needs are being met supernaturally you won't beg the moment you start begging you know something is wrong the moment you start begging as a child of god who's putting his faith to work. The moment you start begging, something is wrong. You're not working according to truth. So you need to pause and ask the Holy Spirit, where is the way I missed? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, as long as you find out, the big miracle may not have happened, but you just realize that you don't have any money. Now, you need to eat food. Suddenly, someone knocks on your door. I said, hey, I, I cooked this meal. I just thought to share with you. No, no, not, not because the person knows that you're jobless and you don't have food to eat. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Someone just say, hey, you know, you can't just have a I want you to taste this food for me. I just made this special delicacy. And I just want to be sure it tastes good. Can you, can you just help me taste it? Like, okay, all right. And that's a whole meal. <laughs> and then you eat, you're like, wow, praise God. Oh, it tastes good, it tastes good. And you've been served. And then you realize you want to go out and, and something just happens. As long as you see those basic things, while you're waiting for the big one, then you know you're really waiting on the Lord and the Lord is with you. And that's just something for you to know. So enhancing our work with the Holy Spirit, aligning ourselves to do what the Holy Spirit is instructing us to do, is one way to enhance the activities of angels in our lives. Now, the same way you enhance the activities of angels in your life, you can also stop the flow of angels in your life or stop the flow of angels all around you. Very important that you know this. Now, I'm going to go into this tomorrow because of time, but let me tell you this. Stop thinking about the challenge you're facing right now. Can you simply connect with the Lord? How? You start by speaking in tongues. You start by speaking in tongues. Say, I don't know how to pray in tongues. Then you need to ask the Holy Spirit. Right there where you are, you can say, Holy Spirit, you know what? I'm done with all this unbelief. I want to receive you right now. And with receiving you, I receive the ability to speak in other tongues. You will give me utterance and just flow. If you will do that now, the presence of God is all around you right now. He's waiting for you. Can you do that now? Can you just step aside and just, Holy Spirit, I receive you. He's feeling you right now. 
receive the Holy Spirit right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Be filled right now. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye.